be heading to that shortly during this service. It's a busy day at Grace, though. We have the Christmas program service after this one at 1045, so you are invited to that as well. And then the chosen, or the Christmas with the chosen, the messengers, is today at the preschool auditorium. Uh, so come check that out. It's at 2 p.m. Uh, tickets are $12 for adults, 10 for children, and it's going to be a great uh, showing. It's going to be very uh, encouraging, I think, for, for all of us to, to go and, and see that if you are interested. Uh, Justin Overlander will be there, too, to, to share a little bit about the uh, series. Big thank you to the fellowship board today, Deb Bo, Carol Phillips, Dick Adams, Kathy DeLong, Wayne and Shirley Anderson, Mary Gritmacher, and Vicki Grow. Just thank you so much for all the work that, sh that you all do to make church happen here at Grace. And with that, we will start our service with the invocation and call to worship. Please stand as you are able. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Wait upon the Lord. Amen. Wait upon the Lord. That's what Elizabeth did. She for her John the Baptist. When the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Wait upon the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Wait upon the Lord. God of all mercy and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, God for whom we wait. We, we have become impatient with ourselves, each, each other, and sometimes with you. We, we have, have turned to our own way, and have gone astray from your will lost in sin and needing to become strong and courageous. We look to you, O Lord, to forgive our sins, cleanse our hearts, and keep us patiently waiting for the promised coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Believe and receive the good news. God sent his Son, the babe of Bethlehem, to show his infinite love and forgiveness for all people. Your sins are forgiven in the holy name of the Christ who came and indeed will come again. You may be seated.
for us this morning. We light three candles on the wreath as we ponder waiting upon the Lord with rejoicing. Mary and Elizabeth greeted one another with gladness. Jesus is the light of the world. No one can put out that light. It will last forever. Lord is with you. Let us pray. Lord God, you choose the very least and raise us up to greatness, for nothing is impossible with you. Teach us obedience, O Lord, in every part of our lives. Ears to hear your word, hands to do your work, a heart for all people, a mouth to shout your praise, a childlike faith, humility, confidence, and great joy. Amen. Mary Gritmacher is our lector this morning. The first lesson is from Isaiah 52, 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. 
Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. The psalm is 19, 1 through 8. The heavens are telling the glory of God. The firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no, no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voices go out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The percepts of the Lord are right, rejoining the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear enlightening his eyes. The word of the Lord. Romans, the second lesson is Romans 12, 11 through 18. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. The word of the Lord. As you're able, I invite you to stand with me as we hear the words of the Holy Gospel this morning, a reading from St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, and you may be seated. Well, Christmas doesn't take any of us by surprise. You couldn't miss it even if you wanted to. Not only uh, does the church spend four weeks getting us all prepared for Christ's birth, but the retailers and uh, holiday catalogs do the same. How is your email inbox lately? Filled with lots of ads, right? Trying to get you ready for Christmas as, as well. Retailers spend a lot longer than the church does getting us ready or trying to get us prepared for Christ's coming. So no one is oblivious to the amount of work that precedes Christmas. There are houses to decorate, trees to put up, cards to mail, presents to buy and wrap and send away, baking, travel arrangements, concerts to attend, and parties to throw or attend. And some of us are made weary by all of this work for the holiday of Christmas. Others of us, including me, totally love it. But frankly, it doesn't matter. You can be totally into the season of Christmas or you can be totally 
dreading the season of Christmas. Christmas is still coming. It's still coming in 13 days. And the expectation is that by the 25th, we're all supposed to be filled with happiness and joy. On Christmas morning, it's all about family. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Fa la 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 la. La la. La la. It's all about happiness. It's all about joy. God bless us, everyone. These expectations are all about happiness, and there is certainly nothing wrong with happiness. It's good work if you can get it, happiness in your life. But some years it is more possible than others, no matter how hard you try to work at getting happiness. So as we move into our third week of Advent, our theme of waiting is not for happiness, it's for joy. It's for rejoicing. And so the first sign of joy in the scripture text for this morning comes with this leaping baby inside Elizabeth's womb. It was his way of expressing something great and wonderful, Elizabeth's son, who would grow up to become John the Baptist, the prophet and the forerunner of Jesus Christ, was already, even before his birth, pointing the way to the Christ child, pointing the way to God's son. And so Luke tells us this story so that we, the readers, will truly believe that nothing is impossible with God. The story of young Mary hurrying to visit her cousin Elizabeth has often been interpreted as two women happily confirming their insider kind of secret knowledge of God's miraculous plan. And, and there certainly is that element of celebratory joy in this story. But I suspect there was also no small amount of fear no small amount of concern, of anxiety, of confusion for both Elizabeth and, and Mary. Mary usually gets a lot of our attention, but Elizabeth also, who was older and farther along in her pregnancy, she had already come a long way in her own understanding of God's work. So Elizabeth, now six months or more along in her pregnancy, felt her baby kicking inside of her. So instead of thinking of that kick as just the sign of her baby's physical development, Elizabeth attributed it to another meaning. To her, this big kick on her ribs was her baby leaping for joy. Leaping for joy. Some of you mothers had your babies kick you before in your ribs. And I don't know if you interpreted that as your baby leaping for joy. Maybe leaping trying to hurt you, but not leaping for joy. So we have to pause here and acknowledge that a pregnant woman isn't necessarily joyful all the time, so I'm told. I've never been pregnant myself, but I have been told that pregnancy isn't always all filled with joy. I don't think any woman who has gone through morning sickness would think of that as a joyous experience. Other discomforts and serious problems can arise in pregnancy, too. Pregnancy has never been a piece of cake. So not only would Elizabeth's baby John become the forerunner of, for Jesus, but Elizabeth herself was the one who was able to help Mary see the blessings that were to come to her as well. 
So the spirit of joy that God filled with Elizabeth extended, obviously, and rubbed off onto Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well. So that by later in Luke, in verse 46, Mary was able to sing, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So there it is again, that theme of joy or that theme of rejoicing. This is what we yearn for in this time of Christmas. So at Christmas, our thoughts are brought to that impossible sight. God, as a tiny baby with little baby fingers and with little baby toes and the swaddling diapers reserved for the smallest among us. We look at that in this season and we say to one another, this is God with us. This is incarnation. God himself with us. And so this morning, we get a really wonderful reading from Isaiah that alludes to a different form of fleshy divinity and rejoicing as well. It begins, if you want to look at that, it's the first lesson from Isaiah. If you just want to look at that with me, it begins with how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace. And then it continues with sentinels. Sentinels, exactly where our local newspaper gets its name. Lift up your voices. Together they sing for joy, Isaiah tells us. Sentinels, those guards, people over the city, those, those folks who look out and spy and keep watch over the city. And then I especially love verse 10. Follow along with me at that verse. Verse 10, the Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all. The image of God bearing an arm for the nations is striking to me because it could be interpreted in so many ways. It could be interpreted as God making a muscle, right? God rolling up his sleeves, right? and showing off his muscles that are on his arm. God pulling back the sleeve and, and striking a strong man pose, having just accomplished something that seemed impossible. I've seen that before. Perhaps you have seen that from others too. It also could be that God is pulling back the cuff of the shirt to expose, we might say, maybe a new tattoo, a physical mark on the body that signifies some sort of emotional mark left by an experience or an event. Come and look and see what I've been through. God says to you and to me. And it could be God rolling up the sleeves to the elbow, maybe revealing scars. More than one person has done this for me, showing the painful parts of life played out on their arm with a blade or with a burn. Survivors of attacks, maybe mental illness, or depression, our arms tell stories. Perhaps God bears the arm and shows where the chemo port is or where the IV was located. So we have this image of God himself rolling up his sleeve and showing us these things. Christmas is the season where we remind ourselves that God does not pretend to put on human skin, but actually does it in Jesus Christ. 
which means that God does not pretend to know our pain, but God actually knows our pain. And this provides us some insight into Christ and what Christ means for us. And it provides some insight in our ability to enter into rejoicing in this time of Christmas. Don't get busy with distracting efforts, trying to make yourself happy in this season of Christmas. Christmas is about watching and waiting for the surprising ways joy emerges in our lives by this God who is with us. Joy and our rejoicing is one of God's Christmas gifts to us. And like all gifts, it can only be received. You can't work for rejoicing. You can only receive it by this God who comes to us. So Christmas isn't just a holiday from our work. It is a holy day of divine visitation. Behold, the angel says to the shepherds, I am bringing you good news of great joy. So here is my point today. Happiness is something we can achieve, sometimes for a while, but joy, joy is something that only God can give to us. Like how God brought it to Elizabeth and Mary and to John the Baptist who leaped for joy in his mother's womb. It's like the angels bringing it to those shepherds. And it changes everything forever. Happiness depends on circumstances. Happiness depends on our level of success, on how life is going for us. And I have discovered that kids in school are seldom happy on Monday mornings. <laughs> Neither are many adults who trudge off to work on Monday mornings. So some of us will have a happy holiday, and some will not. It all depends on the circumstances around you. But joy, joy has nothing to do with what kind of day it is. It has everything to do with our ability to receive holy surprises in our lives. It was just another ordinary night for those shepherds, like all of the nights before them, and suddenly the angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified, but the angel said, Fear not, for I am bringing you good news of great joy, not just for you, but for all people. For unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah. Now, what exactly did the shepherds do to deserve this great joy? Nothing. Not a thing. They didn't work for it. They didn't plan for it. They didn't earn the joy. It just broke into that ordinary night. And that's the way joy comes, only as a surprising grace in our lives. Joy is the happiness that happens no matter what happens to us. When you know God is with you, like Elizabeth, and like Mary, and like her son John the Baptist, and like the shepherds. I know for some of us, just smiling and wishing someone Merry Christmas is nearly impossible. The world tells us that it's the most wonderful time of the year, only it's not. It's not for everyone. Not when there is an empty chair at your table. Not when your body is ravaged with illness. Not when depression is too much for you to bear. Not when you feel all alone, even in a crowd. Not when it is the first Christmas. 
you know, the first Christmas without him or your first Christmas without her? Not when the fear of loss hangs in the air. You may find yourself wondering, how can I have joy? Well, if God can give a prenatal baby like John, who isn't even born yet, joy, God can give you joy as well. And that's exactly what God gives to us at Christmas time. So this Christmas, I'm thanking God, for he has bared his holy arm for you and for me. And I am thankful for bared arms reaching out at this communion rail, reaching out for bread and wine, bared arms that are reaching out in friendship to each other, reaching out in love to one another with our scars and all. I am thankful for tiny bare arms that hug us around the neck each morning, and I am thankful for bared arms, elderly arms, showing wisdom and the marks of a well-lived life. And I'm giving thanks this Christmas that all of these arms first learn this from the one whose tiny bare arms reached forth from that manger and whose scarred bare arms were stretched out on the cross for all the nations to see, for you to see and for me to see. Don't forget Jesus said, all of these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that my joy may be complete. Amen.
And then I invite you to stand with me as we together as the church confess our faith using the words of our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And then we bow our heads in for the prayers of the church. So let us pray. O oh God, our spirits do rejoice in you. For as you did unto Mary and Elizabeth, you have done unto all of us. You have been mindful of us. You have been mindful of our lives. And you have been merciful to us. And so today we declare, O oh God, the greatness of your name. And we proclaim your might, the deeds of your mighty arm, and what they have done. And we tell about the glory of your word to us, a word that helps our hearts to rejoice. Lord, in your mercy. And help us, O oh God, to rely upon your promises and to put our trust in you anew this day. Grant us wisdom and discernment and a faithful keeping of Christmas, a keeping in which we give that which is most important, your love and your hope, the love and the hope that is made flesh in deeds of caring and our sharing. Lord, in your mercy. And grant, O oh God, to those who gather during these next weeks, we pray for safe travels for them and a time of joy and peace with their families and their friends. And grant, too, O oh God, that those who are alone may be visited and cheered by their neighbors and friends and by us. Lord, in your mercy. Grant, O oh God, to those who are dwelling in the darkness of illness, of any need or of any despair, that you would bring a new light to them at this time. Keep us mindful of those who find it difficult to sing or rejoice during this season. And so direct us that we might be ones that bring a new song into their hearts. We remember today... Greg Tokolke, Clarice Olson, Jack Flayton, Jim Anderson, Tom Beals, Ken Club, Monica Kennedy, Brad Matson, Lauren Thone, Julie Muron, Joey Anderson Ernest, John Perry Peterson, Mike Thompson, April Thiesing Krumvida, Asher Fierkenstead, Ken Menning, Christi, Christy Peterson Thomas, Arliss Buer, Doug Breberg, Evelyn Lundgren, Linda Tollickson, Madeline and Wilton Gustafson, Lucille Williams, Deb Trapp, Joy Winningstead, and the families of Gay Septon, Carol Nelson, and Chris Femright. Lord, in your mercy. And grant, O oh God, the silent requests of our hearts at this time, our prayers for our own family, our prayers for our community, our prayers for our world. And giver of the greatest gift, move in our hearts and make us a people who can truly rejoice in your coming to us this Christmas. We pray this in your dear and your precious name. Amen. And then we pray together our offertory prayer. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us through Christ Jesus, our pathway and our peace. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
And so we remember together in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Lord, lead us into your kingdom and teach us always to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And you may be seated.
And would the congregation please rise? Now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in God's grace. Peace be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go in peace, serve the Lord.